Okay, I want to talk to you about um, backup uh, cycles, uh, retention policy, and um, setting up um, your storage policy when you first get in your job. So when you have a job, um, a backup, you know, backup in the or whatever, right? It's, it's good to do this in practice before you, you do it, right? It basically is a couple different things. First, get your storage policies, um, know, know what they are and what they do. Yeah, so um, what does that mean exactly, right? I know I talked about it before, but let me, let me just hash it over to you a little bit. This is, um, I'm going to include this actually, this is a downloadable thing you can, you can get, right? And it just talks about, um, it's actually storage policy retention, you know, spreadsheet or worksheet. In our case, uh, we get we 30 days, two cycles, right? In ours, you can put also like days between a full, and that'll simulate incrementals. Um, for instance, something like um, uh, five, it's usually five days. So you have, this is what it looks like, right? So you have 30 days, two cycles, uh, days between fulls, like um, you'll do, that's not really, that's not really how it should be, actually it should be six. If you're doing one week, one full a week, and the rest are incrementals, it's actually six days between fulls. Actually it should be seven days, actually, between fulls. Yeah, that's right. So what you'll end up with is this. Let's say this is a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So your fulls on Friday. Uh, incremental Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, full again on Friday, same thing. So this is what? It's two cycles, 30 days. So that covers 30 days worth of data. So you can omit this right here, right? So this is what it looks like, right? 30 days at two cycles. So I actually should change my maximum minimum days to 30 and 30. So that's good, yeah. So what we have we have two cycles at 30 days, days between fulls. So that's one full, that's two fulls, um, three fulls, four fulls, um, five fulls. So you have to meet two, both criteria, right? You have to meet the 30 days, and you have to meet the two cycles. So what this means is this: um, you've met your 30 days. And what happens is, prunable means, um, you know, prunable and non-prunable means uh, you can you can delete it basically, right? So prunable means okay, I already uh, I've met the 30 days of backups. I've met the two cycles, so I have all these cycles. These the fulls are the cycles, right? And uh, so as long as I have two, these are the two here. These two right here, not printable, it means you can't you can't um, delete them, you can't overwrite them, right? Because that's my criteria. Whereas these other fools, you can you can delete those, or they can write over them, no worries. Uh, let me show you another example. Actually, let's go 15 days at two cycles, and the maximum days, minimum days, 15, and maximum is our minimum 15, right? So that's going to display 15 days. So, um, 15 days, two cycles. So, have we met the 15 days? Yes. Have we met the two cycles, the two fulls? One, two, yes. We got three here, right? So, this means this. I got one full, I got two fulls, and I got three fulls. These two here, um, these aren't printable. You can't, you can't overwrite them, right? Because you have to have two. Uh, two fulls, which is two cycles, and 15 days. And this full here, you can you can override it, no worries, because we have our two cycles right here, which is which is this right here. This is uh this is common in the industry, by the way. Um, they always refer to it like the retention policy is days and cycles. So this goes for net backup, column vault, uh, Veeam, uh, data domain, Avermar. Networker. The only thing you have to do is you have to input the 
day days in between fulls, meaning because um, because most mostly right in the field, you're going to do once a week backups or once a, I'm sorry once a week fulls. You're not going to do you know every other day fulls. It's not usually how it works. Usually it is like every Friday or every Saturday, right? And the reason you do that every Friday or Saturday is because people are working uh, during the week, and you don't want to you don't want to disrupt um, their their performance, their I/O, right? Basically, because backups do use a lot of I/O, and so you want to have minimal people there, minimal people on the server that you're backing up when you're doing it. That's that's that, right? So you got retention, 15 days, two cycles. Uh, just for our lab scenario, we'll put seven days because we go from like um, Friday to Friday, right? You want to have seven days in between that, right? So that represents Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, another full on Friday, right? And the two cycles represents the two fulls. So meaning, hey, there's two fulls here. Look at that. You can't print the print. You can't prune those. You can't overwrite them. So you've met two things. You've met the 15 days. That's good. And then you've met the two cycles. That's good. Everything else you can prune. Um, I know in other videos I said like what will happen is it will keep. Um, it will keep. Well, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah, exactly right. So you have two, two folds. And it can delete this one. It always has to have at least two folds at all times, right? That's what the cycles are. That's what it means. So included in this um, video, right? I'm also include this like worksheet or whatever Excel sheet or Open Office Calc sheet. Um, the lab as well, so you don't have to like make up names or names or whatever. You can just like use what I have, right? And the IPs if you so desire. Yeah, these uh, these gateways here, Windows Server Internet. So those are my. That's how I get internet, right? By the way. So what I do is I have a, um, I have an internet on the server. So I have like two NICs. Actually, I have three NICs. The first NIC is like the internet, right? And the se second network interface or NIC card, basically, is this 172.16.30.240. The third network interface card is like a 192.168.100. Uh, whatever. And so the third. That's the third IP on this that is not listed actually. And what happens is I use one of my internal servers uh, to go on the internet, right? So um, I actually, this is not on the domain, this server here is not. But the other server, this one is on the domain, meaning it's a domain controller, right? And so what happens is that also has a 192.168.100.20, I think actually is the IP. And so all of these other servers here get their internet from this one right here. And he gets, or he or she gets his internet from my internet uh, gateway server. Okay, moving on to policies. Yeah, like I said, it's a good idea to write your policies down. Uh, this is, you know, you're gonna see this in the field, 100%. Um, well, I should say replication, replicate, no, not replicate the movie, but like replication. Not, yeah. Anyway, so the storage policy name. So you can do this in your lab environment, right? You write down the storage policy name, whatever you name it. Uh, and you define the storage, uh, the retention. You know, 30 days, two cycles, right? You know, when it went over that already. And when you get to your job or whatever, right? You know, know this jargon. They're going to talk about replication or their, not duplication, but they call it replication or duplication, you know. Basically it means like, hey, we're gonna back up this data and these are the days and the cycles, right? But at the same time, we're gonna replicate that data to here. That looks more like this, actually. So for instance, you have the storage policy, so it'll back up um, your production VM for 30 days, two cycles. And then what it does is replicates that data uh, to like a cold, um, uh, like a like a hot site. No, that's one to one. Yeah, it could be a hot site, sure. Um, so you have different um, sites. So you have like a 
a cold site, which is uh, not always on, and then you have a warm site, which is um, some services are up, not everything, and then you have a hot site. Hot site is what you might call like Amazon. Amazon is definitely considered a hot site. Their cloud environment, like it replicates one to one. If it's one server here, it's one server somewhere else. And that's, of course, the backup data. Um, I'm sorry, of course, that's real time data, meaning Amazon's real time. That's not backup, right? Where we're dealing with backup data. We're not back dealing with real time data. Uh, so, for instance, your storage policy, you have. You've backed up your production VM 30 days, two cycles, meaning two fulls, more than two fulls, but at least two fulls in there. And um, then it replicates. So immediately it backs it up. What happens is immediately it replicates it um, to, let's say, another storage device and keeps it there for 30 days. And then after it's from the replication, or it could be, it could, could, could be from that. Um, that storage policy there, or it could be from your initial um, device, your storage policy where it backs it up to tape. So now you have your, um, let me actually change, I need to put this to cloud actually. Yeah, for instance, right, you're putting it to, to tape now. So you've backed it up via VM. So it puts it on, on tape uh, for, you know, concurrently, right? So it's backing it up for 30 days, and then it puts it on tape or the cloud for 30 days or 15 days, as it were, right? So this is all going real time, meaning it's almost like you're storing it three places, right? So you're storing it one time. Let's say this is a, yeah, let's say, for instance, on your production data, you're storing it in a quantum DXI, like a storage device. Yeah, here's what a DXI looks like. It's a... Uh, bigger than this. Um, some of them, you know, 20 get terabyte, 30 terabyte, whatever it is. That's a DXI. It's nothing more than, looks like a Dell server, really. Um, it's just, it's just a storage device, though. And then, um, so then you, then you replicate it to say like a Hive server. And this is what like a Hive server looks like, right? So these giant things here, it's like a, you know, just huge, huge amount of of data in one rack. So Hive could be your replication. You replicate it somewhere else, right? Replicating the data to another um, storage device and you're retaining that for 30 days. And, and now backup, right? Uh, tape backup, if you will, actually. So that's it really what it is, tape backup. A physical tape you're putting into this gigantic um, machine. Some are, as, uh, some are big. You know, some are small, right? Um, quantum scalar, that's a tape library right there. That's uh, that's huge, by the way. All these are tape libraries, every single one. And it holds, I don't know, a lot of tapes. So each tape, probably um, four, no, six terabyte roughly, I think, something like that. Each tape is six terabyte. And it can hold like a couple hundred tapes in this one. I know some of them, like the... The IBM, um, the storage techs, those hold like 5,000 tapes, right? So imagine six terabyte times 5,000 tapes. Um, yeah, 6,000 times, uh, I'm sorry, six terabyte times 5,000. That's 30,000 petabytes, right? Um, I'm sorry, ter terabytes, right? 30,000 terabytes. Um, so that's 30 petabytes, roughly. And the other one is, um, so cloud, Amazon AWS cloud. And, you know, there's no real pictures of the cloud, right? Um, Amazon Web Services cloud, but, and um, probably the disadvantage to cloud backups, especially if you're not the one who is the one providing it, when you bring the data back. I mean, you can send it there all day. Um, and they charge you like a lower fee usually to send it there. No worries. Um, where they make their money is when you have to restore it, you know, uh, back to wherever. So, you know, you, um, the other thing uh, is not really here, but whenever, you know, um, your storage policies that also include uh, don't don't back up pictures, uh, don't back up music, stuff like that, right? They, those files get huge. 
um, omit those, right? Or in the, uh, if it's like Windows or if it's Linux team or whatever, have them set a group policy to um, not allow those files on their on their computers, on their servers. Okay, so thank you for viewing this tutorial on um, just general information about storage policy, how backups, uh, the storage retention, the um, days, the cycles, um, uh, and how backups in general work in a production environment. For instance, moving it from uh, spinning disk to tape. So again, thank you for uh, viewing this video. If you like this video and you want to see more, please jump on to my course, which is, I have two courses. One is at getajobnit.teachable.com and the other course is on Udemy. It's Learn Backup and Restore with Commvault, Get a High Paying Job. You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel. Just type in Gary McNeely or Commvault Whisperer. There's some good content there related to this. If you would, could you click on the subscribe button and click on notifications? Thank you very much.